Good evening and welcome to Christ Church, uh, the second Sunday of Easter. Just a little reminder that um, we are in a Zoom meeting format, which means that your video can be seen as well as your microphone open. Um, we ask that you keep your microphone muted. And when the responses for the people are called for, please keep your uh, mic muted, but please absolutely say those responses along with me. Thank you, and we're so glad you're here. I'll just echo what Susie said. We are glad that you are here on this second Sunday of Easter. This is a Celtic evening prayer service where we try to use uh, Celtic prayers, uh, both uh, ancient and modern, and um, we don't have as much silence as we would have used in uh, sort of, you know, if we were in person, but I do encourage you at the time when we uh, pray for others and for ourselves that we, uh, you might, if you have a candle handy, you might want to light it uh, and at that time. So we do put a little silence in here, but not, not as much. I don't want you to think we've lost our place. And, and you're welcome to stay on the call. Uh, following this uh, service and check in and let us know how you are and if there's anything you'd like to to share that would be lovely to hear from you. In the name of God, creator, redeemer, and giver of life. Amen. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> you just gave away all the secrets. Grace to you and peace from God, our creator, the love at our beginning and without end, in our midst and with us. God is with us. Here we find new life. Let us give thanks for the coming of God's reign of justice and love. Jesus Christ is good news for the poor, release for the captives, recovery of sight for the blind, and liberty for those who are oppressed. Oh, give thanks to our God who is good. Whose love endures forever. You sun and moon, you stars of the western sky. Give to our God your thanks and praise. Sunrise and sunset, night and day. Give to our God your thanks and praise. All mountains and valleys, grassland and meadow, glacier, avalanche, mist and snow. Give to our God your thanks and praise. You pine and mosses and ferns. Give to our God your thanks and praise. Dolphins and salmon, sea lion and crab, anemone, whale and shrimp. Give to our God your thanks and praise. Rabbits and cattle, 
moths and dogs, jay and sparrow and hawk. Give to our God your thanks and praise. You women and men, all who inhabit the earth. Give to our God your thanks and praise. All you saints and martyrs. Give to our God your thanks and praise. Oh, how good and pleasant it is when brethren live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head that, <clears throat> that runs down upon the beard, upon the beard of Aaron and runs down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon that falls upon the hills of Zion. For there the Lord has ordained the blessing life forevermore. Open my heart, 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 open my heart. A reading from Acts. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownerships of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel of John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you receive, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. And if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it on my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. 
Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you might come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. That through believing, you might have life in his name. It's an amazing promise. An amazing promise. I'd like to read to you a poem that we read this morning called St. Thomas the Apostle. It's written by an English poet, a current English poet. His name is um, Malcolm Geit. And um, he's also a priest in the Holy Anglican Church. He's written a lot of poetry. Um, Sonnets for the Seasons, I think, is one of them, but he has written poems for a lot of the seasons of the church here, which is lovely. He's also a Samuel Taylor Coleridge scholar, uh, written a huge volume just on the rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, and, um, and also our, an Anglican favorite, of course, George Herbert. So he's, uh, he's just someone I would love to meet in person. His poem is called St. Thomas the Apostle. We do not know. How can we know the way? Courageous master of the awkward question. You spoke the words the others dared not say and cut through their evasion and abstraction. O oh, doubting Thomas, father of my faith, you put your finger on the nub of things we cannot love some disembodied wraith, but flesh and blood must be our king of kings. Your teaching is to touch, embrace, anoint, feel after him and find him in the flesh. Because he loved your awkward counterpoint, the word was heard and granted you your wish. Oh, place my hands with yours. Help me divine the wounded God whose wounds are healing me. I think it's that line. The wounded God whose wounds are healing mine. What a lovely, lovely way to reflect on the resurrection on the, the gift of resurrected life, that God is present in our woundedness and because of our woundedness and in spite of our woundedness and because of our woundedness, we are able to love others. Um, and I hope we understand that in a way that doesn't shut us off from the world but makes us more compassionate to the world and the needs of the world. And what a lovely, lovely idea that is for us to hold on these 50 days of Easter. This idea that woundedness makes us vulnerable and compassionate. And we don't have to be perfect. Not one bit. Uh, I don't know what it would take to invite others uh, to um, gaze upon my wounds. <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure I'm really up for that uh, most days, although I'd like to think I was. So uh, because we try to put forth a face, um, a, a persona of, of perfection often, that we miss the opportunity uh, to show our human side, the wounds we carry, the wounds we bear, and that somehow in acknowledging them, we acknowledge God. And that until we do, perhaps we're not really fully 
to enter into that life that Thomas was where, where Thomas was willing to go. And that gives us all something to consider for these next 50 minus 7 days. Um, for the next 42 days, you can think about maybe um, your own wounds, Christ's wounds, but not in a way that dwells in the suffering as much as it dwells in the resurrection and the possibility that even in the woundedness, God comes and says, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Always. Three times, in fact, in one short gospel passage, peace be with you. We know about that power of peace and what that peace brings. And so even in our fear, we listen for the words, peace be with you. Amen. The peace of God be with you all. In God's justice is our peace. Siblings, Christ calls us to live in unity. We seek to live in the spirit of Christ. I invite you all now to exchange the peace with one another, to unmute yourselves if you wish, and to say, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. And also with you. We are glad that you are here tonight, and uh, Susie's going to put probably in the chat uh, how we continue to give and give generously to Christ Church. I don't really have any announcements at this time. Just glad that you all are with us tonight, um, and that if you wish to stay on the call afterwards, we'd love to, to chat for a few minutes. Um, I think there's anything else. I would just always encourage you to go to our website, and if you don't currently get our newsletters to let us know and um, and uh, we will make sure that you start getting those. So 
O Lord, our God, you are worthy to receive glory and honor and power because you have created all things. And by your will, they were created and have their being. Let us pray for the church and for the world, giving thanks for God's goodness and the hope of the resurrection. Caring God, we thank you for your gifts and creation for our world. The heavens tell of your glory. For our lands, its beauty, and its resources for the rich heritage we enjoy. We pray for those who make decisions about the resources of the earth. That we may use your gifts responsibly. For those who work on the land and the sea, in city and in industry. That all may enjoy the fruits of their labors and marvel at your creation. For artists, scientists and visionaries that through their work we may see creation afresh We thank you for giving us life. For all who enrich our experience. We pray for all who are deprived of full, fullness of life. For prisoners, refugees, and those who are sick. For those in politics, medical science, social and relief work, and for your church. For all who seek to bring life to others. We thank you that you have called us to celebrate, celebrate your creation. Give us reverence for life in your world. We thank you for your redeeming love. May your word and sacrament strengthen us to love as you love us. God, creator, bring us new life. Jesus, Redeemer, renew us. Holy Spirit, strengthen and guide us.
Blessed are you, God of growth and discovery. Yours is the inspiration that has altered and changed our lives. Yours is the power that has brought us to new dangers and opportunities. Set us your new creation to walk through this new world, watching and learning, loving, trusting and loving, until your kingdom comes. Amen. And now, as Christ teaches us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And together we pray. Through Christ and with all your saints, we offer ourselves and our lives to your service. Send us out in the power of your spirit to stand with you in your world. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the servant, our friend, and co-creator. Amen. Grace be with you. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Go in peace. Amen. We go in the name of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. to have everybody with us tonight. Thank you, uh, Susie and Lauren. Thank you, uh, John, for being here all the way from Tucson, Arizona tonight. Uh, so good to have you with us and to each of you in uh, this part of your evening ritual of Sunday night uh, that we celebrate that together. And I hope it has been rewarding in the way that prepares you for the week ahead. Nothing like a little renewal of spirit and now we have little Ava in the picture. We've got a baby saying, uh, weighing in there. So, you know, always makes it good when there's a baby about. All right, you may unmute yourselves and there we go. Hi, Aubrey. Hi, Elaine. Hi, Allie. Hi, Allie. Hello. Everybody doing okay? Linda's having trouble with her, uh, maybe, or maybe she's just choosing not to. I don't know, she's having thing, a microphone and, um, yeah, she said she has trouble. Audio stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Technology. Yeah. It's always something. Oh, yes. <laughs> I feel like it's just part part church, part technology. That's it. <laughs> part luck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Luck involved some days. Good living. Ooh. Might explain all of our problems. Ooh. 
We like that. I mean, everyone but Aubrey, because she does, she has actually led a good life. <laughs> <laughs> so how is everybody? Come on, say something. I'm, I'm beat. Are you, what, what, you've been working in the yard? I was, I was down in the ivy. Oh. A lot of people don't like ivy, but Ooh. my backyard is, nothing really grows back there um, except ivy. And so I had two of my four dogs down there and we were just whacking away and pulling it off the trees. And, and I said, oh my gosh, I'm going to miss the service. And so this is my attire that I, <laughs> there's probably some leaf litter on me here. You don't have snakes in your ivy though, right? Not that I'm aware of. So now, is that, I'm, I'm, you know, in Georgia, there's things like to live in the ivy and it's, you know, oh. and dogs, mm. I know dogs love ivy. Like they love to do their business in ivy. I, I don't know what that attraction is, but they do. And it's always, I always used to let them go just kind of with a little bit of fear because a lot, I knew a lot of dogs who'd been bitten um, mostly by things that are very dangerous, like cotton mouths or copperheads. We really? don't have, we don't I have know. I don't think we have state. those here, do we? Not no. in this part of the world, no. I think I've seen garter snakes. But That's okay. Those are good kind. You know. The only yeah. exception was when a rattlesnake arrived with a pile of, of wood to Lake Ridge High School. Oh, wow. And <laughs> one of the mothers finally got out a shovel and killed wow. it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. But they're not they're, native. They are kind of dangerous. They're not native. Well, thank you for checking in, Allie, and uh, get, finishing your work. Uh, oh. I see Emily's popped into the picture there. Yeah, she getting ready to go, and so she just popped the baby in my lap. Which... Yes, well, you know, that's what grannies are for. <laughs> thank you, Susie, for taking over the parse where it's free. I was like, boop, baby. <laughs> Smiling, she's so happy. Oh, yeah, she's a good girl. She's a good girl. Yeah. So, this is our little COVID blessing. Yeah. Yeah. Baby. She's done. She looks like you, Emily. Yeah, she does. I see Emily in her so strongly. Beautiful. She likes cameras. <laughs> Oh, she's adorable. Elaine, how are you doing? Good. I was uh, laughing about the technology thing because I wanted to get a tool chest because of getting remarried and things. We, there are multiple toolboxes around the house, you know, from grandparents and whatever. So I said, well, let's just get a tool chest and consolidate everything. So I finally ordered one. It took months to get here open the box and it's in about 50 pieces oh. with an instruction book and so but i started it yesterday and i did some more today and it was so gratifying to not be just trying to figure out how to load a program on a computer it was just look at the diagram pick out the screw get this and and just and it was it's just been so meditative and calming to just follow the instructions to screw metal to metal and not have to think about you know the password and the this and the that that's what, <laughs> you know it was just, oh i know and you can see exactly how it goes together and it's and, it, and yeah. it's coming you know you have a physical thing i mean it's sort of like cooking too you know it's just like something manual and yes concrete so that's that's nice yeah if i see there's a theme happening here from pulling ivy to uh constructing uh a tool chip oh yeah well that yeah. That, you, that you've been pulling that ink that horrible invasive english ivy allison yeah that's oh. i mean just whacking it back and pulling it off the trees oh yeah yeah yeah, do you ever go on any of those ivy pulling parties that they sometimes have? 
I think no, she has her no, own. I have a yard. Yeah, you know, just share that gift with others. Yes. You should invite the group yeah, over after go. COVID. It's really <laughs> satisfying. <laughs> it is. And it, and it looks so neat and tidy when you get it all, yeah, you know, right. hedged and pulled off the trees. And yeah, they're hor it's a horrible plant. Yeah. In this, is, well, here, you know, here. In, this, in the South, we have uh, kudzu. Oh gosh. So while, you know, they, they both were introduced because they're great uh, soil holders. They prevent erosion. They do a terrific job, but they grow exponentially. You know, what's that old saying about ivy? The first year it sleeps, the second year it creeps, and the third year it leaps. leaps. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> And, and kudzu doesn't have a sleeping or a creeping year. It just takes over. <laughs> Buildings, cars, whatever's there in its path. Really? Oh. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, I, that, that's that's the most significant thing about me is just getting um, giving my brain a rest and uh, doing things uh, manual. And uh, it's, it's very, very pleasant. That is, a, yes. Yeah, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> I told my sister and she says, that doesn't sound like fun at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, one man's tool chest is another right. man's. I, I'm making up for, for when, you know, I wasn't allowed to do things like that when I was a little girl, you know, we were literally not allowed to do stuff like that. Because so it would, might ruin you. Right. <laughs> Who would want to marry you? I, and I wore, and I already wore glasses, so you know. <laughs> Moser. <laughs> Linda, hi. Hi, Linda. Well, apparently, wiggling the connection fifteen times didn't help, but unplugging it and putting it yeah. back in the building, Yay. fire escape, whatever, <laughs> fire drill. You know, oh, you go out and come back. You in. know, as I as we were just saying. Right. right. We have no, I have no idea how any of that works. I know how a wrench works. You know, <laughs> you turn it to the right and it tightens the screw. You turn it to the left and it loosens it. Lefty, loosey, righty. Tighty. Okay. Right. And I can how you look at it because left hand people don't see it that way. I don't, I don't either. But <laughs> I have to say it out loud every time. <laughs> I have to look at my hands because I'm left. I'm left-handed, so I have to look down at my left hand and know which way is left. Right. Because it makes uh, it L for all us dyslexic people. <laughs> the same thing happens to radiologists because when we look at an x-ray, it's presented as if you're looking at the front of a person. So your right hand your is, is the patient, is the x-ray's left side. Mm. So then when you go talk to a real person, <laughs> They think that there's some, that, oh my God, because you get right and left, you know, <laughs> you point to their right shoulder and talk about their left shoulder and then you go, oh my God. <laughs> I feel so much more, I feel so much more affirmed after this whole conversation. <laughs> so much, thank you. <laughs> I, I didn't know, I mean, really uh, our woundedness goes deep, doesn't it? It just really does. Well, I, we can't even tell our right from our left, so there's that. I'm going to try to find a poem I heard on NPR yesterday about our scars make us beautiful. Mm. Oh, um, I did hear that. It was lovely. It was, yeah. um, I think they were, it was about, a, a, um, they were doing something with some songwriter. I think Wasn't that was incredible? Funny. Yes. It was with a song, yes. Yes, yeah, I yeah. think because it, it was a woman who had, oh, I'm trying to remember now. Mm -hmm. um, something horrible had happened. No, maybe it was a poem, song. I don't know. Oh, I'll, I'll look it up. She was, a, she was the backup singer for uh, um, the Rolling Stones. Yes. And, yes. yes. You heard this? Yes. Yeah. And now she lost both of her legs in, a, in an accident. An accident. Oh. And, then, um, and so the scar thing was really... When she said she was ready to sing again, and they put her together with a songwriter, and the songwriter wrote that song, and she sings. Oh, it. Wow. yeah. But of course, I can't remember her name to save my life, but that's right. Alessia Cara. Beautiful song. Pardon? Is it Alessia Cara? I thought I just looked up. Oh, okay. <laughs> I I don't know. 
She sang on that Rolling Stones song. Um, uh, what is the name of it? I can't remember the name of the song either. But it's the one that has just a big... shot away. Yes, yeah, just takes... a shot away. Yeah, yeah, yes. That's yeah. it. Yes. Yes. Well, look, it takes a village. Uh, so <laughs> give, me... <laughs> give me shelter is the name yeah. of the song. Yeah, there, there you go. go. Uh, if don't forget who the backup singer is on Give Me Shelter. We can figure that out. Yeah. But yes, it was a lovely song. And uh, yeah. In my house, uh, are you? Me? Uh, Aubrey. Oh, Aubrey. Yeah, how are you? Oh, okay. Um, I'm good. Um, we just had a youth group a little bit ago, and that went well. We played a Zoom version of Four Corners, so highly recommend if you ever need a Zoom game. It's pretty easy, fun. Um, so that that was good. Um, other than that, I'm just I'm chilling. I'm enjoying the sunny weather. My roommate's gone for a few days, so I get to feed her cats. And she comes up with these really funny nicknames for them. Like she'll talk about like, yeah, I'm going to be gone such and such weekend. So if you don't mind feeding the, and then she pauses and I always wait because I'm like, what's she going to call them? Most recently, she came up with wretched ones. <laughs> so now there's a wretched one. <laughs> so I'm taking care of the wretched ones. And last night I thought, from it might need an exorcism. <laughs> Anyway, sorry, I can't even talk about it. He's making these throat noises. He was really creeping me out. Um, anyway, so that's that's my life is demonic cats. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, took my first customer service calls at my new job this week with my mentor listening and watching my screen and, and helping me out. And Great. It was really well, and no one yelled at me. So <laughs> I'm gonna call that a win. Yes. Definitely. Good for you, Aubrey. It, it went well. Some of them were easy. Um, some of them were just people looking for, you know, providers like doctors, you know, that they could see other things or questions about claims. And I'm chatting my mentor, like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> just like, click here, click here, go here. So that was nice. It will come. It will come. Everybody has a learning. Uh, curve there in a learning time so don't be too hard on yourself mm -hmm. are they gonna, are, is your graduation going to be zoom or in person do you know yet so they said there's more information to come but right now they're planning on a drive-in graduation where your family and friends can sit in their car and watch you across the stage uh, so i'm not really planning to go i'll probably visit the campus later in the summer but I don't want to ask people to drive six hours and then sit in the car and watch me. And my sister's baby is due right around then too. So I'm like, you know, I kind of want to be here for that. So cool. But yeah, but I'm glad. I'd be happy. Susie and I would be happy to take a road trip. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, if you decide, for you. if you decide, we, you know, we, any excuse for us to get out of town. <laughs> what, what, what college did you graduate? Um, well, I took classes online, but it's Eastern Oregon University, so it's over in La Grande. <laughs> this far. Yeah, just get on I-84 and you just stay on I-84. <laughs> Forever. <laughs> <laughs> so you hit La Grande eventually someday, so. Oh, congratulations again, Aubrey. That's quite an accomplishment. Thank you. It's really starting to settle in, you know, on the weekends when I don't have any homework. <laughs> I don't know. It's like the skies <laughs> open up and I have all these new possibilities. And um, a good friend of mine is, she's just a few years younger than me. She's 23 and she's ready to move out of her parents' house. And so we're planning to um, probably find an apartment in Beaverton or that area um, later this summer. So I think that'll be fun. I told her it will be like a sleepover every night. We can watch movies and make popcorn and <laughs> nice. cooking, but it'll be fun. Good for you. Anyway, that was a lot of rambling, but I'm doing. Oh, that's great. That's great. Well, Linda, other than uh, computer issues, you're good. I'm fine. You know, uh, everything's everything's good. Thank you. I wanted to ask John. Tell me about that guitar. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> cool. It's kind a, of like a cool. It's, it's, it's a travel guitar. It's cool. They're made in Eugene, Oregon, and. Uh, you just put it together with like a f frame and it's basically like a just a piece of wood 
but it has a pickup and all the electronics to amplify it. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm here in Arizona visiting my parents.